Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Chilling with Chet. Today is going to be a special episode. It's going to be uh, shot here by myself on my own storage lot where I keep a few of my cars that I don't think a lot of you have seen and uh, I think you will really enjoy. I, I do have a small car buying addiction. I think a few of you could have guessed that already. And I uh, thought, well, no better the time than today than to show you what I have while my uh, cameraman, uh, Cody, uh, God rest his soul. God rest your soul. Oh God, I'm so sorry. Oh, no, no, she's not dead. <laughs> We're just divorced. Uh, is dying from an unnamed virus that's out there going around the world right now. So uh, no, he's not dead. He's just, uh, he's down for the count right now. And I know he'll get better. He has to, or I will just end this whole entire operation that we call chilling with Chet. So uh, wish him good luck. I figured let's just jump right into it and start showing you uh, some of the cars that I have, why I have them, the stories behind them. I'm also gonna tell you about some of the terrible luck that I've had over the last year um, with some of my cars. And uh, you'll see that the majority of it was not even my fault. Um, but it's been pretty unfortunate and it's kind of cringy. So let's start with this Jeep Grand Cherokee. I don't know the year of it. Some of you Jeep aficionados will know, I guess it's got a different grill or something. Maybe there's eight slots or something. That's kind of rare. I don't know. Maybe that year. The guy I got it from was kind of in a desperate situation and uh he contacted me through another friend and said hey i really need uh a few grand and if you want this vehicle plus two <laughs> semi-automatic uh assault rifles um that are basically brand new would that be a good deal for you i said uh you need cash or credit so I immediately went over, gave him the three grand and uh, picked this thing up. It runs and drives, it's not that great. I've kept it around, one, to do maybe a tough truck contest with it. It doesn't have the big V8 in it, it's got the straight six. But it's, it's pretty strong, it's a four wheel drive. It's got a hum in the rear end. It's, uh, I mean, Cody looked at it, said he thought it was really clean on the inside. I, I don't know these vehicles at all. I really felt I'll just get this thing and, uh, destroy it but i do have a really cool video i want to do with it i think i'm gonna have the side-by-side -side guys out and uh i think we might have this as one of the uh, featured vehicles for our four-wheel drive adventures with chet all right next up is this uh can-am four-seater side-by-side i actually got it from my brother mark uh mitchell uh garrett's father and uh he gave me a pretty good deal on it. It's pretty, it's pretty, uh, I don't know, optioned out. It's not a super aftermarket tuned up, but it does have a tune on it. Uh, it's got nice doors. It's got all the extra accoutrement, if you will. Uh, it does love sitting out here in the sun. No, I have not left it out here in the sun very much. Um, but I, I had it out in Florida. Thought, hey, this would be great. I'll have a nice, fun side by side that i can take out with the boys but i uh never got invited and never went out one time so i've driven this one time to sedona doing a scouting mission for this big four-wheel drive adventure thing i'm talking about with side by side guys i actually i would sell this if you guys are super interested um don't dm me um you can email me to i'm uncle chet at gmail.com and uh I'll, I'll give you a solid price on it i'm thinking i don't know mid 30s or something it's got low miles it's uh it was a pretty expensive build so something around that range if somebody really wants it all right the next one is this one i know you all been <laughs> waiting to hear about it's this yellow one back here i literally bought it as a joke i bought it because i saw it online it was a couple thousand bucks said it runs and drives which it does and uh, just on the outside appearance, you just can't find these gems anymore. Uh, I'm sorry it's kind of slammed in here, but it had to have been a nice show car back in the, in the late 90s. It's done up pretty well. 
The engine doesn't have much work to it. I would guesstimate the amount of Bondo and fiberglass work done up in the front. It's probably 500 pounds extra. All the Bondo and smoothing out they did in the doors and everything. Probably one of the heavier Mitsubishi GSs ever made. Just like normal show cars, it's all show, no go. It doesn't have any door handles, so I have to leave the window cracked to get inside of it. As you can see the cats thoroughly enjoy this. I mean, you can see this was quite the gem of the late 90s, early 2000s. You could hear this, I mean, you could hear this rattling doors in downtown Glendale, Arizona, Peoria, down in the hood areas. They love this thing out there. Um, it probably was stolen four or five times. Uh, funny thing, when I bought it, it still had a lien. <laughs> So I had to go to the uh, title place with the guy and clear the title when I bought it for a couple grand. It does run and drive. I've thought about if I found the right guy, which I thought I did there for a while, to maybe uh, restore this thing. You guys loved it. I mean, I made one stupid video, kind of went viral. I'll have the tuna, no crust. Everybody loved the car. They just loved that it. it's like literally a timepiece of our generation. I'm in my 40s, early, early 40s. And uh, it was um, a car that we all wanted and loved. I mean, the fact that it's not the GSR, it really does kind of suck. I mean, but you could do an engine swap on this thing. And then it would probably be as fast as a normal stock GS with the uh, 2,000 pounds of extra Bondo on it. But guys let me know what do you think about this i mean i thought about fixing it up uh doing it as a giveaway i thought about uh just running it over with a monster truck blowing it up with tannerite if i could find the property out here in arizona let me know i don't know make some fun videos with it and go kind of drag race people but i don't know when you see all the other stuff i kind of have going on um you'll see why it's kind of just kind of fell by the wayside i just didn't need the right guy that wants to uh jump in and do the work and i'm not saying i you know i need it done for free but just somebody that wants to jump in on something like that and bring it back to its, to its old glory days. All right, guys, you know what this is. Nothing special, just a GT2 RS. Uh, this will start the stories of my terrible luck with people hitting or wrecking my cars, stealing them in the last year or so. This last night was at Valet. And, uh, you know, I know, Valet is kind of cringy sometimes. Uh, my Audi, I'll insert picture here of what happened last time I had at that same valet. Was not the valet's fault this time. They had it parked up front and uh, a guy hit it with his truck, staring at it with him and his three younger girls in the car, I would say. Um, got, you know, got to commend him for that. Uh, but uh, he was staring at the car. He said it was just so beautiful. He didn't realize what he was doing and he ran into it. Luckily, it's all gonna buff out. Got a new plastic piece on order. No damage, no worries, I'll get it fixed. Definitely not gonna report it. This is a 2018 GT2 RS. Still the fastest 911 ever made, about 700 horsepower. This uh, car got its first appearance on race week where I actually took second place uh, where I actually raced um, who would turn out to be one of my coolest, uh, you know, investigational videos and one of the more sadder videos I've ever done, uh, Donald Walters. Uh, if you want to check that out, I'll give you a little clip of that series right here if you guys want to check that out. Remember this guy? Are you racing the GT2? Yeah. It's, How's it going to go? It's, 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 I'll, I max out about 210. You're not going to need 210 miles an hour here. And then he didn't even break till he could probably see the cones. Well, 10 days later, he went missing. In a developing story, this 76-year-old man... Deputies say Donald Walters has been missing since July 10th. Crews have been searching for Donald Walters. Right now, we're about an hour away from Deep Fork River. This was the last location that they found his vehicle. We're going to see what we can find and retrace his last steps. The rumors, too, that like everybody just goes to is that he was talking too much and maybe the big government got rid of him.
And he was a very intelligent, he worked for like the government. He helped that kill me invent the microchip. He trained spies for the CIA. And I'll be goddamn if everything Don Walters said wasn't 100% true. The area that his vehicle was located in was definitely not a place where general travel would be. The thing is, somebody drove that down that road by whom we really don't know. They believe that he crossed the bridge, but then they lost his trail. He made some accusations. He could have shot his mouth off. He was an adamant anti-Trump. Let's say you say, F Trump in this gas station. What do you think is gonna happen? So what I did, I, I raised him in this car and that's why I'm talking about it. This car is uh, amazing. It's never going anywhere. I'll probably keep it till the day I die. Uh, you know, they talk about maybe making another one with this new generation, which would be absolutely sick. But this generation really changed the game. And uh, I love this car. Right now I have these terrible seats in here. But, uh, you know, cringy with all the real car guys. But, you know, they don't look bad. Normal car people don't realize that they're thousand dollar seats, but they're super comfortable. I have the other racing buckets and they are terrible. I actually use my cars, got my jump box over there. I'm gonna be starting one of these cars later. And I ordered this one specifically. So Widowmaker means, I'll wait for it. Widowmaker in German. Yeah, I was the first to do it. Uh, and when I ordered this thing custom the way I wanted it, I had them <laughs> make these little uh, nipples in red. They called me three different times at production and said, are you sure you want those to be red? Is that a, an error? I said, no, I want my run of the mill GT2 RS to stand out. So it's one of the few things I could do that when I see this car out and about, or if we see it in pictures, is it my car? Just look for the red nipples and you will know it's Uncle Chet's. So uh, that is my GT2 RS, that's my baby. She's not going anywhere. And uh, I don't know if you guys want me to make more videos with her. Uh, it's not a problem. She runs and drives and uh, never has a dead battery and is always amazing. All right, guys, so the next vehicle uh, that has been wrecked a few times, uh, it started out with uh, just disrespect from uh, Parker with Toothless Turbos. He bumped into it a few times. He did not see the potential in this truck that I saw. Uh, and uh, he thought it'd be fun to run into it with a golf cart and back into it with his piece of crap gang green Dodge that he had there for a while. And then uh, Robert took care of the rest. He uh, ran into my pony wall at my house. And then shortly thereafter, a car veered out in front of him and uh, totaled it. He said, you know, it wasn't my fault. The police did believe him. It wasn't his fault. The woman pulled out in front of him too fast, evading another vehicle. So the person who started the whole thing was held responsible. Uh, don't worry about the stupid Chet sticker. I just stuck it on there the other day. My daughter finds all my Chet stuff very annoying. So I threw it on there just to annoy her. But I had it all fixed up. New paint job, new rims. I had it lowered. But right now I actually have a little wobble in the rear end um a little shake you can't feel it too much but i basically looked underneath it the pinion angle looks fine uh they did install it correctly uh i i'm worried though that when he hit the pony wall maybe i bent an axle or something like that so i, I picked it up off the ground and uh you know let the tires spin freely and uh I, I couldn't figure it out. It still, it didn't, it wasn't out of balance that bad. It, and you can't really feel it until you, I point it out when we're driving, but uh, I got to get that fixed. So if you guys have had this nagging issue, uh, let me know what you did. Maybe uh, I just need to rebalance the drive shaft. Maybe um, some weights came off of it. Maybe like I said, the axle's bent. I don't know. Uh, if you guys have any ideas, let me know. The next vehicle is a uh, pretty cool one. I, I always wanted one when I was in high school. Brother works at the DMV, man. All the numbers are clean. I had the dope ride, but I was sitting on some bullshit. I needed some rims bad. They are uh, quite the collectible car now, and it is an 89 5.0 convertible. Uh, Vanilla Ice had one of these, had the cool rear wing on it. The exterior is pretty dang good on this thing. I got a pretty good deal on it. Runs and drives great. The uh, interior, I, I don't mind these windows being broken right now. 
um, and the interior getting trashed just sitting out here. But uh, I'm trying to find an interior guy. I think I have found the right guy just to do a stock replacement. So I have all new seats, all new dash, all new plastics, everything ready to go, all new top. And uh, I figured remodeling the interior, doing a few extra little things to the outside. And this is gonna be quite the uh, looker. It'll be quite the driver. I don't think I'm gonna do anything to the engine. Just leave it stock, leave it alone. Maybe do intake, a few little, little stupid things. Maybe try to perk it up a little bit. But um, I don't know, I was gonna maybe shoot some, I have a funny video I wanna do with it. I don't know, maybe another giveaway down the road. This one's a little bit nicer than the truck, but if you guys can come up with some cool ideas I could do with it, I, I really don't know. I, I just like the car, I, I just wanted it. I knew it was a good deal. And it also has the, you know, it's the, these cool 90s taillights. I just thought those were awesome. And just the, the color tone, the red and the gray, silver, just look awesome to me. Obviously the top <laughs> doesn't match. It was originally blue interior. This was not the color. I think it was white originally. It's not a show car, but it's just a nice car, man. I just figured you guys would like to see it on the channel and maybe I'll, I'll give it away. Let me know. All right, guys, now for the back half. <laughs> just getting uh, started, not even halfway through. Uh, I'll go through this one really quick. This is just a roller. We bought it to uh, build it. I didn't realize it was like a 73 with that rear window there. Um, not really what I like. Uh, I had uh, my mechanic at the time pick it up and buy it for me. Sight unseen for me. I threw these rims and tires on just to get rolling, um, but it's really not the, the dragster that I want. So I'm definitely gonna be selling this. If you guys want it, please, please hit me up on uh, imunclechet at gmail.com. Like I said, it's a roller, nothing under there. No, uh, I don't think it has a transmission either. Other than that, oh, this trailer too, it's an up-down trailer. It's a racing trailer that it's sitting on. They uh, are amazing, this Futura trailers. I really don't need it anymore. I had it for my my Radical, and I um, am no longer a member at that racetrack after my wreck with the Tesla. So I'm going to be a member at a new racetrack. I just haven't been that motivated to go down there and set that all up and start running down there. And they don't have a Radical series, so I don't really have a need for a race car, true race car low trailer like this anymore and they're kind of expensive they're like 12 grand 13 grand used so i figure i'll sell it and um just use my normal other trailer stuff that i have now all right guys we'll uh we'll go over this old nova last um i'm gonna get it started and uh pull it out i'm actually thinking about drag racing it this weekend i had so much fun with that camaro out in uh florida i thought dude I got a car that can drag race right now and that's it. I also have that Camaro. I'll go down to my storage and uh, show you guys that one here soon. Uh, it's indoor, kind of a show pony, uh, but it just has a big 454 in it, nothing special. I could drag race with that thing too, but I think it's gonna be a uh, nothing special car. But that one though, you'll see has got a lot of power. All right guys, I'm gonna show you one of the other <laughs> Mitsubishi Eclipses I have. Behind me is a Lemons race car. It's a convertible. I bought it literally for 500 bucks from a buddy of mine. He said it wouldn't run anymore. He had it for his son. He got him a new car and this was sitting out front, not running, not driving. I went over and tapped the uh, starter and it fired right up. So this car has now done a couple lemons races and it is amazing. They are balanced so well. I, I, I didn't do much mods. I did sneak on some eBay coilovers, which are incredible on this car. It is the GS, so it's not overly powered. It doesn't overheat. I have not modified it at all. Uh, you know, try to find some decent sticky tires within the regulations. And you have yourself an amazing Class B Lemons race car. Um, this was a lot of fun. My buddy built the cage. Uh, <laughs> We would definitely do it differently, but I think with the lightweightness of the car and everything else, it is totally fine. We've run it a couple times with them and uh, it works, right? Uh, down here, we have our rugged radios, fire system, and our racing seat. It's been sitting outside quite a bit right now. It's being the pampered life, sitting in my, in my 
box trailer. Um, and, and the funny part about this car is when we run this car, I will usually throw a lot of liberal stickers on it, if you will. Uh, usually, I'm so gay I can't even drive straight. That's a, that's a banger. Everybody loves that one. Then I run the other car, which I'll show you here right now. All right, buy me. <laughs> this is what you got. You have your classic Crown Vic. And uh, let me just tell you, she is not your normal Crown Vic. Uh, I have also lemons uh, race this one. And this is the <laughs> exact opposite of what's in the trailer, uh, being the Mitsubishi. It's our police brutality vehicle. I did not actually do all the original stickers on this, but this is our very right wing vehicle. Um, we have Hillary being arrested in the back seat. On the other side, I have Obama in the back seat being arrested. Uh, we have our bacon frying. It's a very confusing car. But this one, when you drive down the road, I will say I get a ton of thumbs ups. People love this car, especially when it's like fresh and I have all the stickers new on it. When they see the other one, <laughs> uh, I get a lot of the same enthusiasm, but in the opposite direction out here in Arizona. Uh, they really don't like the stickers. But the reason why I did it is when you race it's nice when the other teams don't know you're on the same team and in the same class so the last time we raced with this one this was the big blocking pig that could do a lot faster laps um actually than the eclipse but it would heat up and we would blow through brakes and blow through fuel when the eclipse would just do it uh twice as long and therefore almost twice as fast at the end of the day and uh i did quite a bit of blocking with this and they let me run with the the big push grill in it. It was done right. A speed shop actually built it uh, for a friend of mine who really does not like the lemon guys at all. And I can understand why. They're kind of, how do you say, arrogant California pricks. And they're just shitheads, man. They're just not fun to deal with. They, they have their attitude and it's like, hey, this is the way it is. And this is the way we've always been. And you know, they're kind of sarcastic, but they're not, you know, they're kind of dicks. Well, he put all his time and money into this car, got out there and they black flagged him because he put the sirens on, which I didn't know till later. And they, they black flagged me as well. When I ran my sirens at the beginning of the race, just for one lap as a funny, they brought me in immediately and black flagged me after I was like pole position, but they're just pricks, man. I don't know what their problem is. I mean, I'm definitely going to race there again. They may see this video. I don't really care if they do or not. If they just kind of clean up their act and just were a little bit better human beings and not such, you know, little shits that get their feelings hurt all the time and a little less, you know, this is my show, this is the way it's gonna be and we don't like YouTubers anyways and all that stuff because before I was doing any YouTube, you guys were all pricks anyways. You guys were not fun to deal with. You gotta play their game. They want you to dress up in fairy costumes and do all these funny things, which I would actually have more enthusiasm to do um, if you guys weren't such little shits. And uh, what happened to my buddy was he got black flagged and then kicked out of the race because he argued with them um, and thought that was pretty stupid. And they said, well, this is stupid. You're, you're done. You're no longer racing. After he put all the money and built this car, uh, they shut him down. So that's my little rant on the lemons, guys. And I know I'm not the first and I know I won't be the last because they're probably not going to change. And they wonder why their YouTube channel sucks and nobody cares to watch them other than the people who've raced in their races. Uh, their concept is fun, but... Uh, the guys that are actually running the show, um, I could really do without that. And they should just have a normal box racing series and allow people just to come out, qualify, and not have to entertain the uh, the directors. And they may never do it, but whatever. That's, that's the end of my rant. I'm done talking about them. All right, guys. Sorry, I'm kind of fighting the sun. So I have a little shade over here. I figured I'd jump into this 1992 highest fire truck from Japan directly from Japan they took the stickers off unfortunately thinking about maybe redoing them and you may be asking Uncle Chet why do you need a little mini fire truck <laughs> that has 300 miles on it it's a freaking time capsule guys uh one it's got 300 miles on it. it's freaking cool it's tiny it showing you on camera just does not do it justice in person in person it is tiny i mean the wheelbase is like a c5 jeep 
it's it's super short the whole thing is like maybe 15 feet long or so that's including the big long bumper i bought this because i actually do a lot of work some of you guys know uh down in belize i actually um kind of run a lot of the ems almost all the ems down there as far as the air ambulance goes and uh team up with the local guys uh bert down there hey guys good to see you and uh this is i bought for the fire department um i've been debating sending it down to them or not i'm 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 sending an ambulance down there because they're completely different divisions down there and i bought this fire truck because I, it was just so cool i got a pretty good deal on it and i really feel like uh the fire the fire department on the island of san pedro would specifically love this thing it does not have a, a water tank it has this this cool two-stroke <laughs> water pump which i thought was really cool unfortunately none of the uh accoutrement comes with it uh some of them do online but this one did not probably why i got a better deal on it it needs the hard hard hose that for drafting and some of the other things uh they have some unique um firefighting circumstances down there on that island and i felt this would fill the need for quite a bit and get them into some small areas they have a bigger fire truck down there and uh, they only have golf carts on the whole entire island. If you've ever um, been down there, you would know what I'm talking about. I'll show you a little clip of kind of what the roads look like down there. And I just feel like this would be a perfect, you know, just a nice truck to give them. So I, I'm, I'm waiting to talk to them. They have a new fire chief down there. Uh, and hopefully, you know, he'll, he'll be able to keep it on the island. The unfortunate side is when you do donate things to other countries. Sometimes the government can get involved and say, uh, well, we don't want it there, we want it somewhere else. And then they can take it, commandeer it, and do whatever they want with it, and the intended use is not gonna get used uh, properly. So um, we'll see how that goes, and this one may be going down there with um, my little ambulance that was a, a very similar type of uh, build. It has a longer wheelbase that I just sent down there. So that's what JH was working on, was the two standard ones from uh, Arizona with the American flags on them that I donated to Cletus. Well, those uh, he didn't need, so they're gonna go down to Belize and be used on the mainland. Um, and they're gonna be put to really good use down there and probably driven till the wheels fall off. They're older, uh, <laughs> they need a little work, but they love all that stuff. It, it'll, it'll do wonders down there for them and their ambulance and uh, you know the whole division that they have down there that you know always needs a lot of help. And that is, uh, really where I make a lot of my money and I really focused on Belize in the last few years. I'll be doing a really cool video on that uh, coming up soon, sooner than later of uh, me giving them this new ambulance and a couple of them and then kind of showing you guys more of what I do down there and you know how I've really uh, made a living and, and how I have been successful in my life. It's a, it's a big uh, part of that. So I, uh, I can't wait to show you guys that here soon. All right, guys, so I'm gonna take you over to let's see here i'm not going to get much better space but i might as well show you this one yep <laughs> oh man the tesla the infamous tesla if you guys haven't seen that video you know i don't know how you haven't um we'll show a link to that right now Yeah, I almost got killed. It was incredibly um, scary and uh, one of those moments where your life flashes before your eyes and uh, next thing you know, the wind's knocked out of you and you're crying like a little baby. <laughs> uh, and uh, I walked away from that, thank God. I was uh, blessed that day, had the good father above looking out for me and said, today is not your day. Uh, you need a lot more uh, things to do and I got a lot more plans for you. So thank God I walked away from that. I still have this car. I'm thinking if it was gonna spontaneously combust because the batteries are compromised, it probably would have done that by now. Uh, I'm still fighting with insurance actually, guys. I'm gonna try to come over here without getting the sun too bad. The insurance has been arguing with me um, about this. When I originally wrecked, uh, I thought there's no way in hell they're ever gonna cover it. I was on a racetrack. I've heard that since forever, that you cannot get coverage when you wreck on a racetrack and you have to have race day insurance. I'm trying to pop the door here. Okay, I popped it. You can't, oop, 
<laughs> sorry, you can't race it. Uh, you can't get insurance once you've raced and wrecked on a racetrack. Well, long story short, everything's still in here. It's looking pretty good. Long story short, I was down and out for the count for a while in bed and decided to read my policy. My policy said, if you were racing at a sanctioned event or preparing to race, you had no coverage. And then that's all the exclusion said. I talked to them again a couple more times. They said, actually, you have a claim here. We think we're gonna have to pay it. Then it got turned over to lawyers because they saw my glorious channel and I'm sure they're gonna watch this one because they are thoroughly obsessed with me and uh, saw that I actually did do exactly what I said. I was just out driving the vehicle. The brakes failed, unfortunately, and uh, I had an accident, just like anybody else would on any other day. And uh, unfortunately, I'm still fighting with them. So hopefully that gets settled soon. And I think you guys will all be happy uh, when I get paid out on that because I'll definitely reinvest in the channel and be getting something pretty cool. The uh, the other uh, Tesla that you guys saw on the channel where I got hit uh, <laughs> uh, by the Mitsubishi Eclipse, um, where you all thought that I was whining and crying, I did sell that one um, shortly after. I just don't need to have another Tesla in my life right now. I'm kind of sick of them. If there was a button I could press. I just don't like Tesla. I just don't like uh, the games they play and uh, the way they treat you when you need parts and you need to get things fixed. Back to me whining and crying. Guys, if you have a $130,000, $170,000 car, that's what I paid for this one, um, $150,000 car, whatever you want to call it, and you want to say that I was complaining and crying that somebody hit me while I was racing, how about you get the same car or a $100,000 car for that matter? You go race it in a race where you're not supposed to rub, not supposed to touch have them hit you, minor or not, and see if uh, you enjoy that and see if you just shrug it off and say, no worries guys, Robin's racing. And it was everybody saw it on television and there's nothing you can do to get away from that damage history on your Carfax now and whatever else, right? It's not really Carfax, it'd be YouTube Carfax. People can see that um, and the buyer knew about it. And he didn't care. He knew it was minor and I swapped the wheel out anyways. Yeah, if you guys want to make fun of me for getting upset about that, um, when you guys have a car like that and something happens, you can really join in the conversation and give your opinion and maybe I'll listen to you, but I probably won't. Anyhow, uh, that's it on this. I think you guys could have some crazy ideas. You have had crazy ideas of what I should do with this thing. I think if I do buy it back from them, if I get paid out on it, that might be salvageable. I have no idea if the motors are destroyed, if the battery is really compromised, uh, if it's even worth it. But God, you know, a plaid driveline turned into whatever freak monster thing I want to build with it would be just incredible. It, it would be unstoppable. I mean, this has a cart like a like an electric Leroy. Uh, are you kidding me? Even lighter than what I had it. The thing would do easy eight seconds in the quarter mile, over 160 miles an hour. And also uh, it could be an off-road vehicle. It could be something weird. I have no idea. I just need the, uh, the manpower. And if you guys saw, I am looking for a mechanic. I'm looking for a mechanic engineer, uh, somebody that can also fabricate, you know, um, you know, engine swaps and is familiar with drag racing and whatnot. I put a range of $40,000 to an unlimited amount of dollar signs of what that pay could be for somebody. Uh, some people interpret it as a $40,000 job, that was it. That's if I found somebody that I really enjoy, that I really like, that's looking to come up. He's young and he's flexible and uh, he's probably gonna be good on camera. And uh, he's never done it before, but I think he'll be pretty good wrenching with an, a senior experienced guy. That's where that pay range comes from. And the senior experienced guy could be uh, quite a bit more and actually would have to be quite a bit more. And I'm fine with that. And I never said that I was just looking to hire one. So if you guys are out there and you're, you're interested in something like that, jumping on the YouTube channel with me, and uh, I think we're on we're on the on the rise right now. I think a lot of people are starting to discover what we're doing over here, and uh, I think it's time to invest in this product and take it to the next level. I yelled at a lot of my friends, "You're stuck in first gear, and you need to hit second and third gear to really be successful." 
uh, and I would yell at myself right now. So it's time. I need to uh, put this in uh, the next gears up and really see what this channel can do and really start to really entertain you guys with some more builds and all the crazy things that this parking lot has shown you so far is what my brain is doing all the time and all the fun projects I want to do. Like this one, for example. This is, a, I don't know uh, what year. <laughs> it's actually a Crown Vic uh, station wagon. It is a time capsule. Bought this sucker for not that much. Um, and it runs and drives great. It's got this terrible brown interior that is spotless. I could tell it was one to two owner driven. Has not been in very many wrecks, if any. Fender bender, maybe. It is the exact station wagon from vacation movies. And I'll tell you kind of what my imagination has been on this one. Fold that up, Chevy's Chase style, station wagon, full cage. Take one of the motors out of that black dragster or the red one you guys saw on um, Barrett Jackson that I'm gonna show you in a little bit and do an engine swap and put some real horsepower in this thing. Uh, and then also cage it, put a cage all the way to the back because what's cooler than, let me open this up here. And then a, a rear facing seat back there with a cage over it and I launch you 150 miles an hour, 170 miles an hour down a drag strip. I thought that'd be a pretty cool sensation. I've never seen it before. So if anybody does do that and I see it from this point forward, you're copying me and I'm not gonna be happy with you. So that's the plan for this one. Uh, and this one, ha, another highest minivan. This thing is also a time capsule, low miles. It runs great. It's a little diesel. I picked it up in California as a vehicle to convert into another ambulance. Has a dead battery right now, but how freaking cool are these things you got the train seating where you can like reverse it i bought this in california when i was on vacation recovering from my knee and my bodily injury from the tesla crash and then i shortly thereafter found that ambulance that i sent down to belize and didn't need this for that anymore so now i have this really cool right hand drive diesel van i don't think i'm gonna do anything with it it would be an astronomical amount of work to turn into like a burnout van or turn into anything crazy and hop the motor up. It just needs to be left alone. So I'm probably gonna sell this thing. If you guys really are interested in something like this, right-hand drive, runs great, it's Toyota, uh, and it's diesel. Uh, <laughs> you guys should definitely hit me up at imuncleChet uh, at gmail.com and I'll give you a good price on this thing. I'm not gonna ask a ton. It'll be less than 20, over 10,000. So we'll stay in that range. And uh, it, I'm telling you, I wouldn't sell you a piece of junk. This thing came directly from Japan. It was cleared to customs in California and I've had it out here for a little while and it's awesome. It's uh, it's also an automatic. It's, you don't have to get used to the stick shift thing. And the whole front here comes up. This is kind of cool. Oh, whoop, there we go. And that's how you work on the engine. <laughs> but I've had it open for the battery keep dying on me. This one's actually really cool. So if you guys are interested in something like this, let me know. All right, guys, this is second to last over here at the lot. I just wanted to save this one. The sun, I've been hoping it goes down. I'm gonna do my best here, uh, is the new, brand new Ford Lightning. I was in Florida shooting videos with all these for you guys. And uh, one of my friends out here was driving it. I let her borrow it for just a couple hours. And unfortunately, a guy with no insurance a uh, felony warrant out for his arrest careened into her smashing into my brand new thousand mile Ford Lightning. I'll try to keep the sun out of your face here. It's it's actually pretty bad, you guys. It's uh, I've been saying it's totaled. I, I'm saying that for a lot of different reasons, mainly that all the, air, the airbags on the sides popped, the seats popped. Needs probably a new cab. Uh, the intrusion's pretty pretty good um and if you know anything if you get into the batteries on these you can really total these out fast especially if you don't feel that they're safe to rebuild i don't know i figured when airbags deploy it's an automatic total 
I did do some research. That's not necessarily the case. I was talking to the adjuster. He thinks with it being so new and trying to find parts to rebuild it in a decent amount of time is actually going to be next to impossible. There we go is the airbags side skirt. So you guys kind of know how that works. I didn't know how they worked. I've never been in that bad of an accident where the airbags popped. <laughs> this probably should have happened in my Tesla. Whoa, an airbag. <laughs> And uh, the airbags popped in the seats as well. So if that's one, four airbags popped. Uh, this truck was awesome. I was really liking it, guys. This was turning out to be one of the, my most favorite vehicles I've ever bought. Powerful, quiet, low center of gravity. Uh, it did bounce around a little bit. It does need air ride. I've been in a Rivian that had really nice air ride. Um, but other than that, this truck was pretty cool. I had some amazing plans, guys. Um, when I hit a hundred thousand views, uh, followers, not views. Uh, thank you everybody. My views have been off the charts lately. You guys have been so incredible, uh, is yellow submarine this thing and take it underwater and do it with the side-by-side -side blog guys up North. Uh, that's still on the cards. If I can get this thing, uh, fixed or if I buy a new one or whatever the case may be. But as of right now, I'm kind of burned out on the, uh, this truck in the electric world right now, I need to just kind of take a break, see what insurance is going to do and then recoup and see what's, see what's next for this electric car world, um, and doing videos with them. Maybe I'll build this thing into the perfect, uh, submarine and I'll have less cringy feelings when, uh, I drive it underwater and we all know what happens when you drive an electric vehicle underwater. If you haven't seen that video, I don't know what rock you've been living under. That one's actually a pretty good one. Uh, I'm going to go and try to start the Nova now. And I don't think I'll do it today, but I'm going to run down to my other storage. And we're going to show you the Camaro and another Razor of mine in another storage area. Okay, guys, I'm going to end this video today right here. Uh, I'm having a sun issue. It's, you know, winter here. It's really low on the horizon and uh, it's not making for great video. So I'm going to pick this up tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be starting the Nova and doing some other fun stuff. And I'll try to get the Camaro started, which I've only had that run one time. And uh, see which one I'm going to take over to this little drag racing event that they're having here uh, in two weekends. So uh, let's see if I can get that thing prepped and ready and show you guys some cool content to actually drag race in one of these uh, dragsters I bought. Okay, guys, that's the end of it for today. Uh, please uh, like, comment, subscribe. I'm really trying to hit that 100,000 followers by the end of the year. And I was thinking of a new tagline, so here goes. Remember to spay and neuter all your vehicles. Because <laughs> you don't want them getting down the street and knocking up other vehicles. <laughs> Can you imagine if an ICE vehicle banged out an EV vehicle? <laughs> and they made a hybrid that JH would make the spotlight of his channel and try to tow with it. <laughs> you like my outfit? Don't even break the deal. I thought you said heads up, girl, on the All right. <laughs> well, that's just another day. Chilling with Chad.